as January continues to mature, the experiences we see happening in our world certainly continue to evolve. And it is my intent to speak a word that speaks to the experiences that we all have to live through and find ourselves dealing with. Uh, two different places I'd like to lift up from scripture. One, the Old Testament, the other, the New Testament. From the Old Testament, we focus on the prophet Jeremiah, the 13th chapter of his prophecy, verse 23. Then from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 18 through 24. One speaks about stubbornness and that which is difficult to change. The other deals with how God handles stubbornness and decides to do something about it after time passes. Jeremiah 13, 23, can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? Neither can you do good who are accustomed to doing evil. The Message Bible says it this way. So what are the odds on you doing good? You who are so long practiced in evil. Then Acts 12, 18 through 24. And I say before I read those verses, this is what happened after God decided to rescue Peter out of jail by the angel coming to get him out of jail and cause him to realize that he'd been delivered because of prayers prayed at a certain house by believers. He was sent there to show them that he was the answer to their prayer. And this is what happened after that particular event. At daybreak, message Bible translation, at daybreak, the jail was in an uproar. Where is Peter? What happened to Peter? When Herod sent for him, and they could neither produce him nor explain why not, he ordered their execution. Off with their head. Fed up with Judea and the Jews, he went on vacation to Caesarea. But things went from bad to worse for Herod. Now people from Tyre and Sidon put him on the warpath. But he got blasters. But they got Blastus, King Herod's right-hand man, to put in a good word for them and got a delegation together to iron things out. Because they were dependent on Judea for food supplies, they couldn't afford to let this thing go on too long. On the day set for their meeting, Herod put on his royal robes and took a seat upon the throne and made an oration, made a long speech to them all. And the people played their part to the hilt and gave a shout saying it is the voice of a God and not a man. That was the last straw. God had had enough of Herod's arrogance 
and sent an angel to strike him down. He did not give God the glory, had given God any credit for anything at all. Down he went, rotten to the core, a maggoty old man, if there ever was one, and he died. Meanwhile, the word of God grew and multiplied in leaps and bounds. Enough is enough. I get that from these verses, a time when God even says enough is enough. There comes a time when all of one's tolerance for enduring unacceptable attitudes, there comes a time when one's tolerance for dealing with viewpoints and behaviors that are totally out in left field, there comes a time when it all runs out, when your tolerance just runs out. After being required to walk many extra miles and having to deal with that which is totally annoying, having to use the spiritual gift of long suffering, there comes a time even after walking many extra miles when it all comes to the end and your patience just runs out. After pushing to give the benefit of the doubt, you know, just hang on, it'll change. After you give the benefit of the doubt, just hang on, maybe it won't be that way tomorrow. Just giving it the benefit of the doubt over and over and over again, believing that it can't get any worse, believing that somehow it will miraculously improve, all to find out that it won't. Makes one finally form a definite conclusion. Sometimes people who have suffered long enough have put up with things long enough, reach the boiling point, and come together and say with hands down certainty, enough is enough. Patience becomes impatient. Enough is enough. Tolerance becomes uh, intolerance. Patience becomes exhausted, and people finally say, this is the last straw. Something has to change. The events on Capitol Hill on Wednesday, January 6th, and its aftermath struck a raw nerve yes. and pushed the majority of us to say, enough is enough. Yes. What needs to change sometimes is difficult to change. Yes. And much hinges on the attitude. Much hinges on the viewpoints. Much hinges on the behavior of people in positions of great influence over the lives and welfare of many. A whole lot of things happen when you have certain people in certain positions and it affects everybody and when they're behaving right, that's good. But when they keep on misbehaving, keep on having crazy attitudes, after a while, the population of a nation, the whole world will might say, enough is finally enough. And though what needs to change could be very difficult to happen, it requires the actions 
of the power above the universe to do it. Well, there are some things that nobody but he who created the universe can handle. Or we are the people that he created, but there comes a time when nothing but the hand of God himself can fix it and cause it to change. One of the phrases I remember hearing my earthly father say during my childhood referred to the coming of Shiloh. And because of technology, my mother, who's still here at 93 years old and might get the 94 if the Lord says so by the 22nd of January, I'm sure you heard it as well. Some things won't get straightened out. Some things won't get better until shallow comes. And as I watched the events near the nation's capital unfold on January 6, 2021, and I continued to hear the comments made during the aftermath of that uh, event, that particular phrase echoes through the sound chamber of my mind even as I stand to present this word the Sunday after the American terrorism event took place. Whenever that biblically influenced colloquial phrase is used, it points to the hope for a better day beyond any dismal set of circumstances that seems to be ingrained and set in stone. I noticed Jeremiah mentions how unlikely people who are bad to the bone can alter their course and be different from what they have already demonstrated. Or you can hope that they'll get better. You can hope that they won't keep on getting worse. Jeremiah has a word for it. When people have demonstrated they're just bad to the show enough bone. And you keep hoping that things can change. Jeremiah has a question for you. Can an Ethiopian change his skin? Hard to do. Or can a leopard change its spots? Neither can you do good who are accustomed to doing evil. So it is less, equally less likely for people who are, who are set in their unkind ways to be different. If so, it cannot happen without the Lord above getting involved. The reference concerning when shallow comes was and is an encouragement for us to know that help is on the way. Even when you have to put, say enough is enough. When you turn it over to the Lord in prayer, I don't know how he works and when it works and how he's going to do it, but you got to know that he's the one who can do something about what we can't do a thing about. When we reach our enough is enough moment, we know that the Lord is ready to get involved and he will set some things in order. The verse is read from the New Testament book of Acts. Shows us an instant when people had to use long suffering in their dealings with King Herod Agrippa. To summarize this episode, the same Herod was wreaking havoc in the lives of many to include the key leaders in the early church. He laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, slain with a sword. And when he saw that 
his actions pleased the Jewish mobs. He went after Peter also, had him arrested, and was set to do away with him in the morning. But God had uh, other plans. Interceded and sent his angel to liberate Peter from the clutches of Herod. A liberated Peter went to show himself to the people who were praying for him, and they were overjoyed once they finally believed and saw Peter as an answer to the prayer they were still praying. The following morning, Herod uh, came looking for Peter and could not find him anywhere. The guards could not produce it. The guards could not explain what happened uh, to Peter. So Herod uh, went on the war path and used his power to execute his own soldiers. Upset with the situation, he traveled to another place, Tyre and Sidon. The people who lived in that region relied on Herod for their economic well-being. That's rough when you have to rely on your economic well-being and the person who's in power is bad to the bone. The people who lived in that region uh, you know, knew that Herod was upset with them also. So they made efforts to appease him because their survival and their sense of well-being was on the line. They got close to a person called Blastus, who was Herod's right-hand man. And they had Blastus put in a good word for them in the ears uh, of Herod. Then they even sent a delegation to Herod to try to iron things out. After all, their livelihood, their welfare had a whole lot to do with what Herod would do because while he was in power, he could either help you or he could help hurt you. Believing that their survival was on the line. They spoke what they believed or what fear for their well-being influenced them to say. You know, sometimes the behavior of some folk can make you change your beliefs. And you start believing in them instead of the truth. And then sometimes uh, people just say what they have to say because survival suggests that's what you need to say. It's like saying what you want to hear so you won't do me no harm. Or saying what you now believe because that person has convinced you that they are more than a normal person. So... They uh, decided to stroke his ego. They tried to do some things to squelch his anger. As he spoke, after he dressed up in his royal robes, as he spoke, uh, he sat on his throne and started making great uh, speeches and great statements to all of them for them to hear. And as he spoke, the people shouted the voice of a God and not a man. All right, all right. They thought he was the demigod. And since he just took it all in, allowed it to happen, Allow them to believe that he was a God without correcting them at all. Right. 
the one true and living God said this is the last straw. Enough is enough. This Herod uh, could have believed in Jesus and repented of his wrongdoing, but he wouldn't do it. Instead of accepting the Lord uh, as his Savior and having his heart turn from his wicked way, he decided to keep on uh, harassing folk, decided to keep on hurting people here and uh, there. And he was so arrogant until when the people said the voice of a God uh, and not a man. The Lord himself said, said uh, enough is enough. Amen. The Lord sent his angel. And the angel struck it. And that was the end of him right there. You know, some things still won't get straightened out until shallow come. And I'm glad to know that the Lord has a way of getting involved in our affair. Right. When you have to say enough is enough, God can say enough is enough also. Mm -hmm. And he can send in his answer through the behavior of people that he sends. I'm going on to my seat, and I don't want to get into too many political conversations, but I wanted to lift something up biblically to show you that the Lord can get involved in human affairs. Yeah. If you have people in leadership, and they've been getting to hurt too many people, and they've been given so many chances to change their ways, they've been prayed for by so many people who are having to deal with long suffering after a while. And when you say enough is enough, and you know you can't do anything about it, the Lord has a way of interceding and making things turn out all right. I'm going on uh, and concluding this message, uh, but if you got to say enough is enough, uh, know that the Lord uh, is on the case. Uh, if coronavirus is too much uh, and the vaccine is beginning to be sent out uh, and you said enough is enough, uh, shallows come in uh, through the vaccines uh, that's being put out. Uh, enough uh, can be enough, uh, but when you say it, uh, God has a way of interceding and intervening. The word of the Lord kept on going. Though Herod tried to hurt the folk who were perpetuating the word and broadcasting the word, uh, the word kept on going and it grew in leaps and bounds. Let nothing stop the movement of the Lord. Let nothing stop the broadcast of his word. I'm glad to know that when enough is enough, if you can't do anything about it, he can. Thank you, Lord, for making a way when it seems like there is no conceivable way for us to continue moving across this bridge that's still too far. You keep on making new ways for us, and we give you thanks for what you've done. I invite everyone to join in wherever you are as we usually send out this invitation, and I pray that you will join in with this prayer whenever you tune in and watch let us know that we are praying together and in unison, whatever you do. Heavenly Father, we thank you for so many things. We thank you for watching over us and knowing exactly what is in the next mile or two of our Christian journey. As we walk with you and believe in you, many times we see different obstacles. We see things that are so drastic until we wonder how we can continue 
moving forward. But Lord, we first of all know that we hear music in the air because that shows us and tells us that you are there. Continue to intercede is our prayer as this year continues to unfold. We ask, O oh Lord, that your hand will continue to be revealed, making a way through each new situation, though it seems so strange, it seems so unfamiliar. We trust in you We cause, to cause things to happen at the right time. Lord, we ask that you look above, look from above as we look up to you and cause things to happen in the due course of time. That is the answer to what we pray for. We ask your blessings upon us. We ask it in the strong and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A few announcements I'd like to make before we announce the benediction. Uh, first of all, we have another set of masks that have been made by Ms. Frida Middleton. And uh, we have them and they've been given out to some of the people here. Even though we have the Greenview mask, we have some others made as well. And uh, they'll be given to those that they are made for. It's not a whole lot for a whole lot of folk, but just a nice token um, to show appreciation for the work that's being done. And then I'd like to make known that finally, after long last, the virtual Bible study that we've been talking about in planning will start on this Wednesday, January 13th at 7 p.m. Listen for other instructions. There's, there's been a mail out taking place already. There's been some information put out on the calling post. Um, and then however else we communicate, we'll talk about that event as well so that everybody will know about it. And then next Sunday, January 17th at 10 a.m., the virtual Sunday school will take place as well. This is a new launching for this church to do some different things virtually, and we are on the move. Amen. In the future, I want to make mention that if you want to see the entire virtual worship service, then we invite you to go to the website, the church's website, greenviewfirstbaptistchurch.org, O-R-G. And then you can see the entire worship experience as we are doing it here. As those of you who've been watching by YouTube are accustomed to seeing, uh, if anything changes, then we invite you to go to our church website. Once again, greenviewfirstbaptistchurch.org. Amen. Grace and power belong to you, O Lord. You are able to watch over us wherever we are, lead and guide us all along the way. Our prayer is that you do that continually as this year continues to pass and evolve. Be with us as you have been in the past. Be with us creatively, even in fresh ways as we deal with brand new situations and circumstances. Bless us indeed, for we pray and ask it in Jesus' name, amen. As for me and my house, we will continue serving the Lord. God's blessings be upon you.